By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to build a typing indicator feature like this without writing a single line of code in Bubble. Whoa. This feature is perfect if you're building your own messaging experience like WhatsApp or even Facebook Messenger, as it just allows users to easily see whenever someone's trying to communicate with them inside of a chat. Now, throughout this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you everything there is to know about setting up both the design and the workflows for this feature. And so my goal is to make this as easy as possible for you to implement within your own application. Look, there's so much that I wanna cover throughout this tutorial, so let's just grab our Bubble Editor and we can dive right into it. Before we jump into our Bubble Editor today, I've just taken the time to create a checklist of everything I want to cover throughout this tutorial. Now this is just something that I do when it comes to any application I build or feature I create in Bubble. I personally just like to create a checklist of items so that way I can tick things off as I add them into my application. Now I just like to use a tool called Notion, but of course you can use whatever note taking tool you'd like. But it just allows me to better document the actual building process, so that way if I ever need to come back and refer to how I've set things up. I have a source of truth within my own internal documentation. Now, of course, if you'd like to use this checklist and follow along as we build out our feature today, I'll be sure to include a link to this Notion doc in the description of this video, so that way you can make a duplicate of this template, and then you can tick items off as I start explaining them to you. Now, the first thing on my list is that I'd like to show you how I've set up my own custom database. So if I was to jump over into my bubble editor, today what I've done is I've already pre-built a messaging application. I'm not here to teach you how to build one of those from scratch. I have other tutorials that can explain that. What I am here to do though is to show you how I've set up my database to support the feature of our typing indicator. So if I jump over into my data tab, you'll see I have three separate data types. I of course have the default user data type and within this, I just have two data fields. There's the user's name and their profile photo. As you'll see, I'm keeping things as simple as possible. But of course, if you built out your own custom application, your user data type might have a few additional fields and that is completely fine. I then have a data type known as our chat. So if someone actually wants to chat with someone in our application, we're almost gonna create something like a chat room between these two users. So within this data type, I have a field known as our users. And this of course is a list of users because we'll be adding two users into a chat. And then to support our typing indicator feature, I've also added this field known as the typing users. And this is once again, a list of users. And I'll be explaining how we're gonna utilize that in a moment. But the last data type I wanna show you is our message data type. And by all means, if you've already started creating your own chat application, this is probably gonna look very familiar to you. Within each message, I have the actual content of the message. You might call this the text of the message. And then of course, I'm linking each message to a chat. So I have a field known as the original chat or the OG chat as an abbreviation. And that is of course linked to my chat data type. And so that is how I've set up my database. What I'd also like to do is just show you how I've set out the design of my chat page. So on this page, I have added a type of content known as our chat. So every single time a user opens up a chat, I'm gonna send it through the data of that chat to this page page. So that way I can then display a list of messages that belong to this chat. Then at the top of our page, I have this group in red here, which just displays the information that the person is speaking to within this chat. So I have the profile photo of the person who is not the current user in this chat, as well as the name of the person who is not the current user once again in this chat. And I imagine if you've already built out your own messaging feature, this is going to look relatively the same. Now, one thing I should also just point out is that when I build my applications within my editor. I just like to color code all my groups so that way I can easily see where they sit on my page. Of course, when you go to preview or publish your app, you can remove these background colors. But while I'm actually working in my editor, I like to clearly define where all of my groups sit. It's kind of like building with colored Lego blocks, which of course, if you're a visual learner like myself, it makes things a whole lot easier. Then below our main group at the top of this page, I have our repeating group, which is just displaying a list of messages. And of course, I'm searching for all of the messages in my database where the original chat that they belong to equals the same value as the current page chat. 
It's super straightforward. Inside of each repeating group cell, I also have two groups. There's this group on the left-hand side, which is in white. And this just has a type of content set to be a message. And it's just referring to the current cell's message. Now, both of these groups are actually hidden by default. And I've created a condition on each of these groups, which just determines which group is going to be displayed to each user. So the messages on the left in our white group are going to be the messages that are sent by the person who is not the current user. So if you and I had a chat within my application here and you were logged into your account, if I was to send a message, my message would appear on the left hand side because you are the current user logged in. Whereas if you were to send me a message, your message would also appear on the left hand side to me. And of course, in the green group below, I'm also displaying a message. But in this case, with my condition here, I'm only displaying this group to the person who is the current user. So that way, each of our own messages will be displayed on the right hand side in our own applications. And then finally, the very last group I have on my page is just this group which has a multi-line input field inside of it. So this is of course where someone can type the content of their message and I have a group which works as a button which when clicked is actually going to send a message. So whenever someone clicks on this button, I just have an existing workflow that creates a new message. It links the content of that message as well as the original chat and then it resets the relevant input fields. Now that is how I've taken the time to already set up this page. So I'm just gonna jump back into Notion and tick off that I've finished running through these two key points. Because it's now at this point that I wanna focus on the crux of this video, the main event and the reason why you're watching this tutorial. And that is because I'm going to teach you now how to add a typing indicator onto our page whenever someone else is typing to a user in our chat. So the first thing I'd like to do is jump over into our bubble editor once again, and I'm going to want to add a group onto my page. And to streamline this whole process, what I'm actually going to do is just copy a version of our main group at the top of our page. And I'm going to update the name of this to be called group typing indicator. And I'm then going to move this group down on my page so it sits directly below my repeating group, but also above the group that stores the multi-line input field. Now, when it comes to this group, I'm going to delete the text within this, but I am going to keep the image in this. So if you remember, this image is displaying the profile photo of the person in our chat who is not the current user. So once again, if you and I were chatting and you opened up this chat page, you would see my profile photo, whereas I would see yours. Then beside this image, what I'd like to do is add in another group. And I apologize if I'm not running through all of the layout or responsive settings for this group here. That's not my main priority right now. I just wanna show you how I'm gonna add this typing indicator in. But what I will say is that you'll need a group here with the container layout of a row. So that way you can add two elements side by side. I'm then going to scroll on down to my containers menu. I will add a group into my existing red group here. And when it comes to this group, I'm gonna first of all remove the style of this because I'd like to set the background style to be a flat color and I'm happy to keep that as white. When it comes to the borders of this group, I'm going to define each border independently and I'm going to give each border the curvature of 20 except for the bottom left border. I'm gonna keep that as zero. And you'll see why I do that in a moment. I'm then going to jump over to my layout tab. I'll update the container layout of this group to be a column. And then when it comes to the width of this group, I'm gonna set this to be 120 pixels and I will leave this as a fixed width. And then I'm gonna do a similar thing for the height. I'm gonna select that this should be a fixed height, only I'll make the height itself 40 pixels. And so because this is a fixed value, it's gonna be no larger or smaller than this. But what you'll also see if I click away is that because we had defined each of the borders independently, but left the border in the bottom left-hand side of this group as the default setting, this will actually look like a chat bubble. What I'm gonna do is just click on that group once again. I will then vertically align this in the center of my red group. And I'm just gonna add in 10 pixels of margin the left so that way it doesn't directly touch the profile photo beside it. And after adding this group onto our page, what I'd now like to do is install a plugin which is gonna add a nice animation effect into our application. So if I jump over to my plugins tab, I've already taken the time to install the plugin, but what you'll need to do is open up your plugins library and search for the animated loaders plugin. Now this is a free plugin you can use and from my experience, it is a very helpful plugin at creating nice animated loaders. After you install this, we will jump back into our design tab. And if we 
scroll on up to our visual elements, you'll now see that you have this option to add in a bouncing loader. So what I'm gonna do is add this into my white chat bubble group. And when it comes to this element, I'll just need to update a few minor settings. The first thing I'll need to do is jump over to our layout tab and I will horizontally align that in the center of my white group. I will then select on the white group and update its container alignment to be centered as well, which will now just ensure that this element is going to be positioned directly in the center, both horizontally and vertically. And that's all we'll need to add into it. And after adding this group onto our page, this is where the fun really begins. In order to actually make our typing indicator functional, we're gonna need to do two things. The first is we're gonna need to create a workflow that recognizes when someone has started typing into this multi-line input field. And the second thing is we're gonna need to create a condition on this group to determine when it should actually be displayed. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is create the workflows that are going to power this feature. So we're gonna jump over to our workflow tab and we're gonna create a brand new workflow from scratch. So I'm gonna to click to create a workflow trigger here. And for the trigger of this workflow, I'm gonna have this be the do every five seconds option. And if you're not familiar with this trigger, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna run this workflow every single time this interval occurs. And you can also update the interval seconds. I'm gonna update this to be every two seconds. And what I'm gonna do is also add a condition onto this workflow trigger because I don't want this to indefinitely run every two seconds. I only want this to run when someone is actually typing in our multi-line input field. So I'm gonna create a condition on our workflow trigger and I'm gonna recognize that this should only run when our multi-line input field, which stores our message content, when its value is not empty, meaning that someone is in fact typing into this field. What I'd like to do within this workflow then is head to our data tab and choose to make changes to a thing. The thing I'd like to change is going to be our current page chat and I'd like to update the typing users field because if you remember, this is a list of users and in this field, what I'd like to do is add to it the current user. So now we can determine that the current user, so the person who has logged in and is typing a message should be added to the total list of people who are in fact typing at this point. Now, what I'm also gonna do is click back on my workflow trigger and update the event color here to be green just so that way later on, I'll be able to easily tell this apart from the second workflow I'm about to create. Create. So right now we've created a workflow that allows us to add someone to the list of people who are typing in this chat. But what happens when someone either deletes their message or sends their message? They're no longer gonna be typing. So what we need to do is remove that person from our list of typing users. So I'm gonna once again create a workflow from scratch. I'll select the do every five seconds trigger. I will update the interval to be two seconds and I'll add a similar condition to before. Only this time I'm gonna recognize when the multi-line input field is its value is in fact empty. So this means that a user is not typing in this field. What we'll then do is once again, head to our data tab, make changes to a thing. Only this time we're going to update the current page chat. And instead of adding a person to the list of typing users, we're going to remove that person from the list of typing users. And that person is of course going to be the current user. And just to differentiate between these two workflows, I'm gonna click on the trigger here and update this event color to be red. So that way I can tell that this is the workflow where we actually remove someone from that list. And that's all we'll need to create for our workflows here. The very last thing we'll need to do in order to make this feature functional is head back to our design tab and we'll need to create a condition on our group that contains our typing indicator. And so at this point in time, this group is currently visible every single time the page is loaded. So this would be displayed by default and that's not the experience we wanna create. Instead, I only want this group to be displayed whenever someone is actually typing in our chat. So I'm gonna head to our layout tab here. And I'm going to unselect that this element should be visible on page load. I'll also collapse this element when it's hidden. So that way when it's not being displayed, it doesn't take up any empty space on our page. I might also choose to animate the collapse operation. And I'm gonna have this be the fade in out option, nice and simple. And of course, now I'll need to create a condition that recognizes when this group should actually be displayed. So if I head over to my conditional tab, I'm gonna define a new condition. And within this condition, I'm gonna recognize when the current page chat when its list of typing users 
contains, and I want to recognize when this list contains the person who is not the current user. So again, back to my example before, if we were chatting within my application here, you're obviously only gonna want to see this typing indicator when I'm typing, not when you're typing. It's obviously not gonna be relevant for you to see this group because you already know that you're typing in this message. Whereas you only wanna see it when I'm typing and I only wanna see the indicator when you're typing. And so what I'd like to do is recognize when the list of typing users contains the person who is not the current user. And so the way I can do that is by referencing once again, the current page chat, the list of users. So these are the two people within the chat. And what I'd like to do is type in the word minus, and I'm gonna minus an item from this list. So within our chat, if we have two users, and if I minus from that list, the current user, I'm then left with only one user in that list, and that is the person who is not the current user. So I'm gonna reference the first and only item. And once this condition is true, what I'd like to do is select that this element should be visible and tick that that should be the case. And that's actually everything we'll need to create within this feature. What I'd love to do is show you a quick preview of how this is going to function. So I'm gonna jump over into a preview of my app and show you the experience of two users actually exchanging messages. Over in a preview of my application, I'm currently logged in as two separate accounts in two separate browsers. Over on the left hand side, I'm currently logged in as an account named Emily Jones, which is why on the chat on the right hand side, you can see that I'm talking to Emily Jones. And that of course also means that on the right hand side, I'm currently logged in as a user named Gwen Mills. And so because Emily is speaking to Gwen, you can see Gwen's profile photo here. Now at this point, these two users are having a pretty heated discussion, but things are about to get even hotter when they start to see the typing indicator that we've added in. So within Emily's account, what I'm gonna do is type in another message here. And what you'll now see is that over in Gwen's account here, we can see a typing indicator from Emily, which of course means that she's crafting a response. And let's say at the same time, Gwen also starts typing a message. What we'll now see over in Emily's account is that the typing indicator for Gwen is also being displayed. Now we've all been in this experience before where we're at a standoff. Both of these users are typing a message. Who's gonna be the first to send it? Who's gonna pull out? In this case, Emily realizes that Gwen needs to respond to her message. So before she sends a second message, she's going to delete the contents of her message she's typing. And then what you'll see is that her typing indicator will disappear because the value of her multi-line input is now empty. Just jumping back into my Notion checklist, what I'd like to do is tick off that we've finished not only building out the workflows for our typing indicator, but we've also created the condition on our group that ensures that it's only displayed when someone actually is typing a message to the current user. And just like that, you'll now have your own fully functional typing indicator within your own Bubble application. Like anything with Bubble, it's never been easier to create your own powerful application without having to write a single line of code. If you'd like to stay up to date with any additional Bubble tutorials I share, be sure to hit that subscribe button on my channel, so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. But in the meantime, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.